Herm Edwards on 104.5, the team brought to you on McLean Food Service. Normally, Mondays at 5.15 because of the baseball playoffs, we got them today, right now. And coach, as you look at the Jets situation, Geno Smith missing the meeting on Friday. He was a few minutes late, coach. Would you play him to start the game on Sunday? Well, I think we're getting a lot, we're getting a lot of different stories. He wasn't actually late. He actually missed the meeting by an hour. So being late and missing a meeting are two different scenarios for me. And obviously, you know, like in life, you treat everyone, uh, you don't, you treat everyone fair, you don't treat everyone the same. But, but this guy's a quarterback. Uh, you can see a guy maybe being late. Uh, but when you miss the whole meeting, that, that's, that never bodes well with me. Uh, he basically wouldn't have played. Uh, I would have just sat him out and just said, hey, if it's more important you to be at the meeting, uh, at the movie rather than the meeting. You know, the thing about sports and in life, I've never seen a game stop because the player wasn't, wasn't available to play. They kicked the ball off at 1 o'clock, and the game is bigger than any player. And I think players need to realize that. And if you think because what you, because you go to a movie is more important than being with the rest of the team, this is football season. It's not a hobby. It's not a hobby that you're, that you're actually competing with. This is, your, this is your profession. This is what you do. And when you do something like this, it just shows uh, disrespect for the organization, for your teammates, and for the game of football. Uh, you know, work it out in your on your priority list. So, for me, it, w- it was an easy decision. You miss a meeting by an hour. Guess what? You're not going to play the whole game. He would not have played it all for you on no, Sunday. No, I mean, no. What, why? I mean, what, why should he play? I mean, just, just him or all the guys? Him. You're setting the no. All the guys, whoever was with him, you're not playing. I mean, this is this is not. We're not going to San Diego. Uh, to go to you know to, to to go to Disney World and and go to you know to, it's not a this is not a, a vacation this is a we're preparing to win a game we're one in, we're one free football team and you need to understand that uh, a part of that is being on time being where you're supposed to be and it's just was Peyton Manning ever missed a meeting no I don't know it does I, I, I'm just looking at guys in yeah. Hey, I can see a guy being a little late. Okay, I can understand that. Okay, you're a little late. Okay, I, I get that. But you missed the whole meeting by an hour? Coach, now, now that's what that's what I'm kind of looking at. Here's a guy who you know everybody's kind of calling for your job. Your your leadership skills are in question. You take a group of players and you miss a meeting. I think that's what got me most freaked out. If I'm a Jets fan or a Jets player, here's my leader in the huddle. He can't even read a clock. Well, the problem is this too: is if you're the head coach and you're Rex Ryan. You've gone to bat for this guy numerous times. And what kind of respect are you showing to the coach? I mean, you know, you, you can play the guy and say, hey, I'm going to still play him and it's okay, I'll find him. But they, they don't get that. Players don't get fined. you got to take them off the field. So, Coach, this weekend are you playing Geno Smith or Michael Vick as your starter at quarterback against the Broncos? I would think Rex would go with Geno. I mean, uh, Mike didn't do, do a whole lot to say he should be the guy. So, you got to go with Geno. Coach Herm Edwards with Armin and Levac, 104.5, the team brought to you by McLean Food Service. Uh, coach, if you're the coach of the team and your quarterback and a bunch of players are late to a meeting, does it ever fall on you? Meaning, I'm looking at a team that's undisciplined, had, had 11 penalties on Sunday for almost 100 yards. Does the undisciplined on the field also transfer off the field where these guys are missing meetings? Well, first of all, you know the discipline of the team is the responsibility of the coach. Now, obviously, if, if you know, it's two things that, that happen in coaching. Either you're coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. And if you continue to uh, obviously let players get away with that, then they think that's how, we, that's how it operates around here. So I think you have to set the precedent of how you want to run your organization. And fouls are fouls. You know, fouls can be corrected. But um, you're the one that has to implement that as a coach, and you've got to make sure players understand that we're not going to be a team that's undisciplined, especially on the field. Coach, did, is is Rex Ryan done? Did he is he is it over for him in New York? I don't know that. I, I hope not. I think he's done a fine job there. His his problem has been obviously uh, consistently at the quarterback position, and um, when you you see that in the National Football League, when you don't have consistency in that position. You're gonna you're gonna struggle because that's the way it works. And now it's really flowing over to the defense because the defense can only hold for so long, and then obviously if you can't score points and you put them in bad situations because you turn the ball over. It, it, it compounds uh, it compounds the problem. Coach, what about John Idzik not getting enough talent for this team in the free agency? If you're a head coach, do you buy that? Do you allow yourself to think, man, this guy didn't give me enough players. That's why we're in this position. No, I don't know that. I just think this, 
you play with the players you have, and it's up to you to figure out what their skill set is, and you go from there. And I think for the most part, they realize that their skill set and their their most valuable players are probably uh, on their lines on, on both sides uh, of the ball. Yeah, they have some pretty good offensive linemen. Obviously, first round picks. They have some fabulous first round picks up front. And then from there, you know, you have to realize who do you have. And it starts with the quarterback. You know, what kind of football do you want to play? And I think Rex has a formula. Their problem has been this. They turned the ball over uh, too many times, and uh, they, they the can't score enough points. And, and that becomes a problem. Coach, with all this turmoil going on around the team, you know, you got Geno missing meetings, you got people calling out Idzik, Woody, and Rex. If you're the coach, how do you focus this team to finish out a season that started out so poorly? Well, because it's a long season. You know, I've had some seasons as a head coach where it didn't start off well either. But I think the key is that your preparation is about this week's preparation. It's not about the people outside the building because they can't help you. The only people that can help you in the building are the the players and the coaches. And the last time I checked, once you decided to pick this football team and you decided to pick these players, you don't get new players in the middle of the season. You don't get new coaches. You have to stay together. And uh, I think Rex is probably telling those guys, hey, look, we're in this together. Now we can get our way out of it or we can sink like a ship. So it's on us. It's on nobody else. No one's going to feel sorry for them. No one's going to help them. And so you got to get out of it yourself. And coach, luckily for uh, New York fans, that we have the Giants bouncing in uh, to their offense well, way we faster. Well, we were saying that three weeks ago. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, I mean, you honestly. Say that. You know, we forget. We have short memories. We have short-term memories. Uh, you know, we were, we were beating the Giants up three weeks ago when they couldn't move the ball. So. That's what's kind of funny about sports. You know, it, it's easy to sit and criticize when we're not wearing the shoes. But all of a sudden, now the Giants, oh, yeah, they're cats to be out. We're a lot better. Three weeks ago, we were, we were up in arms. How do you feel about this bounce back, and now they've lost Rashad Jennings? Can they continue this offense with a rookie at the running back position in Andre Williams? Sure. You can continue that. And kid, I thought the kid played pretty good. And, I, and, I, and we discussed this early, that it was going to take about a month before this offense got into tech. Got into, got into the flow and for these guys to figure it out. They've done a nice job of that. And they've got to be excited going forward now because they're in the hunt that all of a sudden a division that they're in we thought wasn't going to be very good. It's very competitive. The Dallas Cowboys have won four games in a row. Still, Delphi Eagles are 4-1, and one, and now the Giants are sitting there at 3-2. and two, So it makes it very competitive in this division. Yeah, what do you see in this NFC East now, the way it's unfolding? Well, I like it. I like it. You know, we thought the NFC East was going to just be the Eagles and not, not so fast. And I think I think it's going to boil down to this. Whatever team can play the best defense will be the team that wins this division, in my opinion. I think you have three pretty good quarterbacks that are playing well. Um, they can score points. It's a matter of who's going to play the best defense. And we'll have to wait and see on that. Coach Odell Beckham Jr. made his regular season debut for the Giants. Looked fantastic. Is this just Did they just hold him out long enough? Or, or were we like kind of babying this guy and maybe he should have been back sooner? No, you always hold the guys out, especially hamstring, uh, because those are recurring injuries. If you look at the Jets, uh, Decker's still dealing with that. If they come back too fast, and everyone kind of, you know, takes it a little bit different when it comes to hamstrings. And you, you always wait another week, Jelly. That's always been the mindset of coaches. And so, you know, he came out and, and had a nice, nice opening day for him, and and he gives them a spark with their offense. Now you have him as well as uh, Cruz and. You got a, they found their way. They found a tight end that they didn't know they had. He was former quarterback, basketball player. So if you're the Giants, things are all looking up. Coach Herm Edwards on 104.5, the team, normally joins us Mondays at 5.15 because of baseball we have him today thanks to McLean Food Service. Coach, in regards to the Buffalo Bills, was it really as simple as a quarterback change going from the young E.J. Manuel to a 31-year-old Kyle Orton? Is it that simple that things are fixed now in Buffalo because he's in there? Well, I think, you know, that gives you a spark. That gives you a different situation. I mean, it gives you a different guy at the helm who's playing with the football. Uh, Doug has been through this before. Doug Marone was on my staff when I made the, when I made the switch from Vinny to Chad Pennington, and it sparked us. We were 2 and a 5 football team headed to San Diego, and we ended up winning seven out of the next nine and winning his division. So Doug has been through this before as an assistant coach, and I thought that when he made the move, it was to bring some life into this offense. This is what happened. So going forward, now they've got a big game against uh, New England. Speaking of New England, this uh, this AFC East looks like it's wide open too. But then all of a sudden, New England pulls a whole Brady Belichick maneuver and, and stomps out people. What? How's this AFC East gonna gonna unfold? 
Well, New England's not going away. I think a lot of people thought that it was the era of Brady and uh, and Coach Belichick was done. Uh, not so fast. Uh, Miami is, is is playing fairly well, and Buffalo. But Buffalo was starting to play, and you know the Jets. They got to win a game. If they can win this game, all of a sudden they get some life in them as well. You're talking about you know they play Denver this week, so it's too early. I mean, there's no undefeated teams. Uh, when you look at you know the season, there's a lot of football left, and I think as a fan. You know, you can't get all get, get all frustrated if, if the team hadn't won a game or, or, or only has won two. There's 11 teams that are what three and two, uh, uh, three teams that are four and one, uh, four teams that are three and one, and then there's a bunch of teams sitting there. You know, with, uh, with it, it, two of them are 500, and uh, 12 of them have losing or have losing records. But if you got one win or two wins, it's still early. I mean, there's a lot of football left. I think we lose sight of that. Coach, is there a team when you look around the NFL right now, based off everything you just said, that you say, man, I'm going to keep my eye on, on these guys. They, they might have something. San Diego, they're playing very well, um, as we can see. I mean, when you think about it, they're the only team that beat Seattle. And as much as we like Seattle, and Seattle's a fine football team. But San Diego's playing well. Uh, Denver, I think, is starting to come, up, come about. There are some teams that are starting to find their way. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see a little bit of a separation here in the month of October, hitting November, because most teams you figure out if you get in November with at least maybe six wins or five wins, you feel like okay, you do the math. Uh, you know, by the eighth game, if you're five and three or six and two or have that type of record, you got a chance to win your division. You're talking about stacking some games on top of each other now, winning ten or eleven games. Coach, has your uh, has your phone rang from the Oakland Raiders yet? Are you are you going to be the new coach of the <laughs> Oakland Raiders? Oh <laughs> uh, boy, that's that's a view. Um, you know, it's a shame too because they, they need to be a team that, that that's relevant. Uh, when they're better, the league is better. When they're winning, uh, they've got a young quarterback. Obviously, they've got some talented players as well. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, whatever they do, they'll figure it out and get it going in the right direction. There's been a lot of change there in Oakland, and it's a shame because those fans are are deserving. Uh, they're loyal Oakland fans. They travel well, as we know. So hopefully that thing will get resurrected and, and, and the Raiders will be back. So you're saying if they call, you'll say, hello? I won't even say that. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll take the call. I've taken a lot of calls, but I don't generally give that information out. I'm not one looking for uh, <laughs> looking for people to say, oh, he's, just, he's available or he wants to coach again. Do you, though? I mean, like this, do you ever get the itch? No. No. You're good. You, you had your, uh, your no. fill of it. So it's it's probably crazy to, it's probably crazy to say Gruden wants in too, right? Well, I don't know. I can't speak to John. I mean, I don't try to speak to other guys. But you guys I have a pretty know. sweet gig, though, huh? Well, we have. I have an opportunity. I have, I have a wonderful platform. To talk about football and more than that. Basically, because ESPN has been nice enough and kind enough to allow me to speak on a lot of different platforms. Uh, I feel like I'm an ambassador for the game of football. I've uh, been very fortunate to be in the league for 30 years and. Now working for ESPN, it's a blessing. Well, Coach, we know that we enjoy having you every single week. Thanks to McLean Food Service. They've been around now for 120 years. No debt. They are looking for Class A drivers with 50,000 miles experience and a safe driving record. Average first-year pay, over $60,000. Company paid hotels and meal allowance. They have new tractors, all 2012 or newer. They have a 401k match of $1.75 for every $1 contributed. McLean co.com for more information you got to check them out it's a great company levac and i spent our time around there for a day mclean food service your home for class a delivery drivers and coach it means a lot that uh, you join us every week and thank you very much we'll talk to you next monday at 5 15 thank you man my pleasure